I'm Joel Teft. Uh, behind me is Black Heron Spirits out here on 8011 Keene Road in West Richland with uh, Red Mountain behind me. And uh, you, you've been in the wine business a long time, so this is kind of a switch for you. Yeah, I was in the wine business for 23 years and decided to come and be a small distillery. And uh, tell me a little bit about the process, because you're still actually making wine. We're making some wine for brandy, but we're also uh, cooking and mashing uh, corn and barley for our gin and vodka. Okay, well let's go inside and take a look at the operation. You bet. Joel, I haven't really been in very many distilleries, so can you kind of explain what, what you have behind you here? Well, behind me is our copper pot still. It's 300 gallons. It's made in Louisville, Kentucky. Gives us the ability to make about 50 cases of uh, distilled spirits a week. And we just uh, boil off uh, beer or wine and get the alcohol out of it. So basically what you're doing is evaporating the alcohol out of uh, out of something that's already got alcohol exactly, on it. Exactly, yeah. We're just taking off the alcohol and leaving the rest of the liquid. Okay. What uh, what kind of products are you making out of this? Right now we're doing a corn whiskey, a uh, barley vodka, and we do a gin. Okay. And what, what, what are the raw products for each of those? Uh, corn whiskey is 80% corn with 20% barley. The uh, vodka is all barley. And our gin is the vodka. We just infuse it with our own special blend of botanicals. Okay. Where, where do your products come from? Mostly from Washington. Uh, Connell for our corn. We get our barley from different parts of Washington. Okay. And you've got some other products that are coming out. You mentioned a limoncello. We hope to use vodka and flavor it with lemons for limoncello. We have some brandy in barrel and we'll of course be making barrel aged whiskeys. For people who don't know what limoncello is, can you kind of explain what that, uh, where that originated? It's an Italian product. It, it's, it's made from lemons and spirits, and it's uh, sweet and pretty sweet, and it's what they use for after dinner. I've had a lot of it, and it's really good once you stick it in the freezer for a few days. It's isn't just it? like your vodka. Keep it in the freezer, and it's awesome. Yeah. Uh, now, you've, uh, you make wine for the brandy. Um, tell me a little bit about your background in the wine industry. Well, I owned Teff Cellars for 23 years, and I'd worked at other wineries previous to that, and I sold my winery 18 months ago to begin construction of a distillery. And, and what, what led to the decision to kind of go this direction in your career? I felt that the winery was larger than I wanted it to be, and I kind of wanted to branch off and do something else. Okay. And this is smaller, a little yeah, closer we, to we town? We do about 2,500 cases a year instead of 20,000. And well, the production area is 15 feet away from tasting, so we'll be able to keep in touch with our customers and make small amounts of really high-quality spirits. Talk about the distillery industry, because that's really starting to blossom in Washington State. Yeah, there's more and more starting now that Washington has said it's okay for distilleries. There's, I think, six operating with about 16 in the wings. I look to see it like the microbrews of the 80s. Okay, so you think this is just going to grow and grow and grow? More and more, yes. Okay. What, what, what do you think the ceiling is, or do you have any idea? I think it could be the same as the wineries. I think you could see 600 little distilleries if people want to do it. Wow. So do, do you see people uh, coming to you eventually for uh, 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 spirits for doing ports? Maybe someday? Yeah, we, we already have. Oh, you have? Uh, we, we've been contacted by a number of wineries to uh, take their wine and make it into brandy for them. Uh, one product you didn't mention is grappa, and I think people who have been to Italy have, have heard of grappa. Any uh, thoughts on uh, making well, that? Well, I've also been approached by some wineries to do grappa. Uh, we're kind of busy right now, but uh, I don't think I'll do it on my own this year, but if somebody wants me to, I'll give it a shot because I think okay. it'll be fun. Okay. Uh, you still have to kind of deal with the government, probably even more so than, than you did in the wine industry. Can you kind of talk a little bit about that? Uh, it's really not that much different than the winery. Uh, they're just a little more picky on the, uh, the taxes and your bookkeeping because there's more tax per gallon on alcohol, so they're a little more worried than wine. Hmm. You also were mentioning that uh, the distillery business is kind of like the wine industry and in that uh, some products like uh, are like white wines that can be released quickly and some are like red wines that take longer. Can you, can you talk about that for a second? Yeah, it's um, our spirits we have now, the vodka and the gin, are clear spirits. We can make them in about a week. Our whiskeys and brandies will have to age for barrel in barrel for a couple of years. So it's kind of like having white wine to start your winery and then letting your red wines age. Okay. Same principle. Okay, great. Anything else to add? Come on down and try us out. Okay, great. Thanks, Joel.